Yes, thank you. Um, do you have the experience that um, painting or conservation in general is very close to authentication? Very close to an authentication uh, research? Modification. Well, when we as conservators look for um, findings, and it doesn't matter what, you know, for a purpose of conservation, to see the actual condition or the state of the object. And don't you think there is a relation between authentication and the research for conservation? Yes, yes, for sure. For example, here is like Tenzenbo, is the, the first Taiwanese artist that was using oil color. And thanks to the restoration we have done, we have been working with, with the artist for five years. And we have seen how the artist worked, how he storage the paintings, and the way he storage in the, in the studio. And the way he was storing the paintings, he was doing the, the impasto has like a special marks. And thanks to that kind of marks, has helped us also to identify other fakes or to, to try to identify if it will be a real Tenzenpo. Another way it was also because in the corner the artist was using like canvas paints just to, to carry the paintings. And I'm talking the paintings of the 20s and 30s. So that holes in the corners also helped us to identify the paintings. So for sure the conservation it will be like something that could help for, for that. Yeah, because in the, in the talk of Dr. Wu, um, he, he says, he points out several times that he is doing scientific research, but he can't say anything about authentication. So I, I wonder, um, I, I understand fully that it is not only by science to say something about authentication. It is, of course, a, a collaboration between the humanities and the sciences, art historians, material scientists, and conservators. But because he's an essential part of a process, I wonder how you deal in your firm with this uh, with this issue, we, in, in the case, for example, of Tenzenpo, we don't say, for example, if it's a fake or not. Um, even when it is not totally clear? Even if it's not, we have like some points that say that it's not a real painting, but we are not like saying, no, we are 100%, this is fake. Mm -hmm. I give you the data of chemical, that the pigments, the, the binding, the, the technique like the hole, the, the crossing mm -hmm. pasto, and with that we are showing a way to say you that yeah. this is like, this is not going to be a real painting. But, but this is very interesting because you are a private enterprise, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. And you're choosing actually an academic approach, mm -hmm. right? You know, by saying, "Well, wait, uh, we keep some distance here. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, the outcome of this research is not fully to say it is fake mm -hmm. or it is yeah. a real, you know, yeah. belonging to the artist." So that's an academic approach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the market, mostly art dealers, auction houses, mm -hmm. they ask from us. Yes. You know, what is it? Yeah, but it, it depends also with which artist you are talking about. Of course, of course, yes. It, yes. You it, always it, have to refine the, those So processes. it's not the same, like in this case, in Tentempo, it's an artist from the 20s and 30s. So you, you can like identify by techniques and by materials of it's like an artist like from like 10 years ago. So the materials, it could be the same. The canvas will be the same. So it could be the technique, the, the procedence, that, that, kind of, that kind of things. That it's like more from a history, from dealers, it's a bit coming from the family. Yeah. You need to think 
like con you need to consider other points, and not only because we only can talk about from the materials. Yes, that, that's but our then, but expertise. Then, oh yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, but then you, you know, and this is not criticism. This is just you know reflecting. Um, that means that um, you only excluding so by saying this is not from the period but you never include you know an inclusion means that you can say this belongs to the oeuvre of this artist mm -hmm. yeah yeah but as conservators that is not our job no no i understand but this is in general because yeah. you also have a scientific yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but we are just giving the support uh -huh. So we are giving the support, and the, and the support is to the art historians or to uh, yes, to art historians, to collectors, to museums, to everybody, to auction houses. So okay, but to to narrow the point a little bit, to focus on it, um, suppose you are invited to work with uh, a team mm -hmm. uh, building a catalogue resume from from a certain artist. What will be your um, ethics in a team like that? For identification, you mean? Yeah, yeah, for actually, well, you can use it for conservation purposes, mm -hmm. sciences. My but approach, you also can use it for my, my approach will be with materials and techniques. Yeah, but when you see it in the circle of a team? I will be just like an, another, another round and I, I wouldn't be leaving the team. Uh -huh. Okay. So that is not that's not my. It will be I don't know a curator, an historian, uh -huh. some, and it will be just supporting. I will be another member of the team, but I, I, I wouldn't be leaving it. Uh, so. Yeah, we, we we see everywhere different approaches. So, for example, the Van Gogh mm -hmm. Museum, they say no. We have a scientific department. We have art historians. Yeah. And conservators, and they work together. Yeah, for sure. And they come to a conclusion. Yeah, for sure. So it's not only the no, art no, no, no. This, this is yeah, yeah. you need to have a, a team. Yeah. So because the work that conservator does doesn't do the historians or the curator. Yeah. The the knowledge the conservator has about materiality is not the same as as the others. Yeah. So you are adding more knowledge to try to identify. Because they're they're focused on one artist. No, because you focus on materials. Yes, but used by that artist in that yeah, yeah, period. Yeah, yeah. So it, I, I, I mentioned Chanton Pop because like the artists will have work more in this case for identification. Mm -hmm. So and we do understand more this artist. Mm. So. But that brings us back to the role we have. I mean. We actually in the same situation as you are because we also a private enterprise, mm -hmm. and of course we invited for teams to deliver scientific research, but um, we have actually the same position. Okay, I see. Yeah. But it is difficult. Yeah, sometimes it's difficult, especially we depending with which artists we are talking about, which material they are using, mm -hmm. and yeah, the project will be difficult. If you have like good researches, you have to study or uh, where it's coming from the painting if it suddenly appear. So Yeah, also, it's it's everywhere different. Yeah. Okay. For example, we have in uh, with Tentempo a yeah. very famous painting that was lost like almost eighty years and we only had just one photograph for a newspaper. Mm. What was that? And suddenly it came to the market. So and we have been restored and it actually it is original because we have to do all the all the research with just from the point of view of the material, the technique and But it, do you think the, the photo in this case was uh, an evidence? Yeah, yeah, it was. And the and the family, the artist foundation knew about the painting, but didn't know anything. So at the point, at the end, it was because the artist gave the painting to to a friend. So, you know, to I I've been in the same situation that we found photos of the artwork, and um, 
I even researched if these photos were real. Okay. So I didn't trust it. That, that was in, in this case in, in, in the yeah. newspaper in the 30s. So the photo at least was real. So okay, but still, didn't have the problem. I, I know forges go very far. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and of course, the people who own the works, they always say, yeah, you know, they, they, they're very positive minded. Yeah, for sure. Especially one of these important yeah. artists, and the yeah. value is extreme. So, yeah, yeah for sure. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Sorry. Hi. Um, question along the same line. How do you, how would you recognize or identify that that particular painting you're speaking about, perhaps 20 years later, a forger knew about this and at the, or 10 years later even, um, could have access to the same materials, the same canvas, the same everything, that that person didn't go ahead and make a copy? For example, here in Taiwan, uh, I guess that people that, that, that is trying to make fakes with the artist, uh, they don't know that the stretcher changed in the, in the 40s here in Taiwan, because the stretcher before 40s, because Taiwan was like a, a Japanese colony, so all the materials, they were coming from Japan. All the colors, the canvas, the stretcher, and the stretcher was expandable. That means that the structure can open, but after the second wall, that stopped. So they were just doing here, and they are fixed. They are way, you can open. So you, you can, the painting can, can stretch. So many, many paintings we have found with, with this kind of a structure. So obviously, they are fake. They couldn't be a painting that they are saying is from the 20s, and the stretcher is from the 40s. So there is no way. So in a way, it also depends on specifically the artist, which is what you were saying. Because uh, I recall there was a case with a Jackson Pollock that a woman claimed that she had found one in a junkyard sale. And it went under extreme technical scientific analysis with all the major museums, et cetera. And he had never signed it. Um, so no art historian, no curator would acknowledge the artwork as his. Yeah. And ultimately, um, there was one um, forensic scientist who found fingerprints of his on the painting based okay. on other paintings in museum collections. But the curators, et cetera, insisted that it was still possibly his studio assistant who handled his paint pots for him and show and decided yeah, to make one maybe of his the own. wife. No. Right. Uh, well, no, she had her own art. <laughs> but yeah, so interesting to find Yeah, the this analysis. happened with contemporary art. With traditional, it's more difficult because you, you can't put mm, a date to the material. But with contemporary art, with polo, with, with painting like Chan Xiao Kan, who says that it's fake or not? It's right. very difficult. Yeah, 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 sure. No? Yeah. yeah. I would like to react because you, Dr. Wu had also uh, a very interesting uh, case on fingerprints. Uh, you have this fingerprint specialist in uh, Canada. It's called Dr. Biro. And... Um, for a long time, people believed that this uh, fingerprint uh, research was very strong evidence. But now, that whole plan is uh, changing because for two reasons. One is, what is the reference? You, you were already referring to that. The reference, is that the artist? Or is it someone who just touched the work? Because you don't have the fingerprint from the artist. The other thing is that when you look to a little a step further in that research, um, there is a reason why fingerprints are taken by the, uh, for, for passport printing, for example, um, with ink and not with paint. Because paint is a very thick substance and ink is very thin. 
So you need to get very clear lines in a print to make all the comparisons. So when you make a comparison, comparison in paint, you don't have the right reference. So that shuffles the whole research of fingerprinting uh, <laughs> behind us. <laughs> That's interesting, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's fascinating. <laughs>